Welcome everyone. It's Tuesday. That means it's time for a sports Q&A here from me, the Schleg Daddy, on this channel, Schleg Daddy TV. Reminder again, these Q&As happen every Tuesday, Thursday, Sunday. Once you see one of these Q&As uploaded, you want your questions answered, go to Twitter, tweet your questions to at pfspot underscore Schlegel. Do it, do it, do it now! Maybe after you watch the video, but then do it! Get more questions. So that way I can answer more of your questions. I'm sure a lot of you have sports questions, especially with the NFL season coming up soon. But let's get started with this, what I'm sure is going to be a somewhat abbreviated version of the Q&A due to the number of questions. At underscore Keese 10 asks, are you going to do a Kevin Love commentary like who should trade for him and why? Uh, yes, that's going to come up very, very, very soon. And I think I have some interesting thoughts and takes on it. But you're just going to have to tune into that commentary to find out. But that's coming up very soon, as in maybe, you know, after this Q&A. Uh, at Devin Throw asks, should MJ be the logo of the NBA? No. Jerry West is the logo. Jerry West has been the logo for a number of years. Michael Jordan is his own brand in his own way. I really don't see a reason why we should change the logo to Michael Jordan. And believe me, I've got the man tattooed on my arm. I've got his stuff in the background. You know, a bigger Jordan fan you might not find. But the fact of the matter is, that doesn't mean he should be the NBA logo. You, know, you look at Jerry West, I not only factor in his contributions that were many and several as a player, you're talking about a guy who contributed mightily as a front office presence for the Lakers over the years. Um, I'm okay with Jerry West remaining the logo of the NBA. I really, truly am. Uh, and then Devin Throw's other question is, who is the best power forward ever? This is always an interesting question because, you, you don't really have one that stands out truly above the rest. Some people will say somebody like a Carmelone, and they'd have some good reasons to point to a Carmelone. Some of the younger crew that doesn't know better, that has been programmed by the national sports media over the years, might say Kevin Garnett, and that's because they don't know what the hell they're talking about. A great power forward, but we're talking about the best ever. Um, you know, you might sit there and throw somebody like an Elvin Hayes into the mix, a Bob Pettit into the mix, um, Kevin McHale into the mix, a Charles Barkley into the mix. But when all said and done, even though I technically kind of view him as a center who happened to play power forward all these years, I'll go with Timmy, Tim Duncan. Here's a guy that's now won five NBA championships. Here's a guy that's played big at big-time moments, something that Barkley and Malone and Garnett, frankly, primarily failed to do throughout their careers. I would go with Tim Duncan. If I want one power forward to start my team with, I'm going with Duncan. At Master Nobody 30 asks, any chance the Bills move from Buffalo? Um, yeah, there's a chance. There's a strong, decent chance. I'd put the odds at 50-50 at this point. Um, if so, where could the Bills go? I mean, obviously the most logical choice uh, based off of several factors that they move from Buffalo would be Toronto, but the NFL's got to step in here. Somebody's got to step in here. The Bills organization, if they need to, needs to step in here. The fans, the city of Buffalo, other organizations need to step in here and keep the Bills in Buffalo. The NFL doesn't need to expand in fucking Canada. That's stupid. Sorry, Toronto. That's the truth. The Bills need to be in Buffalo, and that's all there is to it. And no, they shouldn't move to L.A. That's stupid. The L.A. Bills, and then we get into the name-changing thing. No, the Bills need to stay their ass in upstate New York and Buffalo, period. Those people have supported that organization over the years. You know, maybe instead of moving the team, maybe they give the people a team that's actually not a piece of crap. Just saying. At Van Rallis asks, which sports do the people in Chicago love more? The Bears or the Bulls? Oh, it's Bears, and it's not even close. Oh, easily the Bears. Now, way, way back in the day, you could have made the argument that it was a Blackhawks town as much as anything, and that's definitely true. Uh, in the 90s, obviously, it was probably a Bulls town. Um, but, you know, even when the Bulls are doing great, there's something different about the Bears. The Bears rule Chicago, and people in Chicago know what I'm talking about. It's clearly the Bears. At Madden God 45 
Who does ESPN have a bigger heart on for, Peyton Manning or LeBron James? My God, what a fascinating and interesting question. You look at LeBron James, and they sit there and they talk about him all the time. They market him all the time. They push him all the time. They protect him all the time. They promote him all the time. They're the ones that hosted the freaking decision. And all of this, you know, when something goes poorly with the LeBron James, they find a way to spin some of the blame off of him onto others. When he doesn't play up to the standards that he should, they find a way to blame others. And with all that being said, ESPN's hard on for LeBron James is an inchworm. Is an inchworm compared to their fucking hard-on for Peyton Manning. It is ludicrous and ridiculous the amount of hard-on action that the national sports media gets for Peyton Manning. Look, Peyton Manning might be statistically the greatest regular season quarterback of all time, one of the all-time greats at the position, a first ballot Hall of Famer. No question in my mind about that. I do not take that away from him. But to sit there and tell me that this guy is to be completely absolved from any and all blame after all of these years and all of these times that his teams have failed to play well in big games and he, in large part, has failed to play well in big games is inexcusable and unacceptable. I look at that divisional playoff in 2012 against Baltimore. I turn on ESPN Sports Center. I'm like, I wonder how they're going to spin this. And when they got to the point of talking about Peyton throwing that interception across his body, I'm not shitting you. They showed it and then spent the next eight minutes talking about the failure of the defense, allowing that big bomb to Jacoby Jones late in the game that sent the game to overtime. I said, wait a second. Peyton Manning threw an interception across his body over the middle of the field in fucking overtime, and we're spending eight minutes talking about the pass? Seriously? We're not going to give Peyton Manning any responsibility any accountability here? Furthermore, we talk about all the Peyton Manning ass-kissing. You know, maybe if he would have done a better job in that game from an offensive standpoint, putting up more than 21 points, keep in mind that two of those touchdowns scored by the Broncos were fucking special teams touchdowns by Trent and Holiday. Maybe they wouldn't have been in that damn position to begin with. But again, ESPN says nothing. The hard-on for LeBron James is strong and mighty, but it is an inchworm by comparison to the national sports media, and in particular ESPN's never-ending, raging, hard-on, pigskin style for Peyton fucking Manning. No question about it. At AGS WWE, what is your favorite sports call ever? Oh, favorite sports call ever. Um, hmm... I could say 17 seconds, 17 seconds from game number seven or championship number six. Jordan, open, Chicago with the lead. Michael Jordan running on fumes with 45 points. That would be Bob Costas in reference to Michael Jordan's last shot in game six of the 1998 NBA Finals. That would be one. Uh, do you believe in miracles? Yes. You know, the um, semifinal game of U.S. versus U.S.S.R. in the 1980 Winter Olympics would have to be another favorite call of mine. Um, those would be two. There are a lot of other great sports calls all over the years. Uh, Joe Carter, game six and 93. Touch them all, Joe. You'll never hit a bigger home run in your life. You know, some of those calls that come to mind. Um but, yeah, probably a Jordan-based one. <laughs> and Anthony Fon. Oh, excuse me. AGS WWE has another question. When do the Eagles, when do you see the Eagles, excuse me, becoming Super Bowl contenders? And what moves do they have to make to be that? Um, they need to get better and more depth on the defensive end. And I think it's at least another year before they're legit Super Bowl contenders. At least another year. And Anthony Fauna asked, do you think baseball's unwritten rules are stupid? I feel like all it does is make baseball more boring than it already is. I will tell you this. Their unwritten rules are crap. Their unwritten rules are stupid. Maybe, and this is for all the people involved with Major League Baseball, the players, the umpires, the coaches, everybody involved, maybe the reason they're fucking unwritten is because they need to be unwritten because they're stupid. One of the 
pillars of the stupidity of the unwritten rules in baseball. Oh, what the hell was it? Years back, it was Bob Brunley bitching about the fact that Kurt Schilling had a no-hitter, and I think it was Padres catcher Ben Davis. It might have been him. Freaking bunted in the eighth inning of a 2 to nothing game. And here's Bob Brenly and Kurt Schilling, and Bob Brenly in particular, bitching about the fact that you don't do that. That's one of those unwritten rules you just don't do. Hey, ding dong, dumb dick. If that guy gets on first base after bunning, which he did, then that means a home run ties the fucking game. And as Herm Edwards so eloquently put it, you play to win the game, you stupid fucks. All this shit of, you don't celebrate with the home run. And if he hits your guy, then you throw behind him or you throw him high and tight or you hit him. Ah, oh, fucking A. Just play the goddamn game. You know, for all the pitchers and uh, managers that get upset about a guy celebrating after he hits a big home run, how about don't serve up the fucking meatball that he takes yard on your ass? If you sit there and get pissed off and upset about a guy bunning, to break up a no-hitter, you know what? You never freaking know. I don't care if the game is 9 to nothing. You never know. You play to win the game. You're expecting teams to just sit there and roll over for you because you got a no-hitter or a perfect game going. That's bullshit of the highest order. And that reeks of competitive tomfoolery, if I've ever heard it. It's ridiculous. So yes, I hate baseball's unwritten rules. It's one of those old things for an old sport that is stuck in its old ways and has failed to adapt to the 21st century. At Master Havoc finishes out this Q&A by asking, any other free agents the Bulls should try to add to their team this offseason? I'm hoping for Ray Allen or Shannon Brown. Mm. I get why you would want Ray Allen. I really don't have any interest in Shannon Brown. But at this point in time, I think the Bulls and the way they're currently constructed have the depth necessary to at least give it a shot and make it a run. I don't know if they really need to add anybody else. Obviously, if you could bring somebody in like a Ray Allen for a season, I mean, here you're talking about a guy who could still play in spurts and a guy that brings you a legit assassin as a three-point shooter, which is something you could always use more of in the NBA. So if they did bring Ray Allen, I'm most certainly not going to bitch. But if the Bulls really don't bring anybody else in via free agency or via trade, I'm not going to bitch. I like their offseason, and I like the team that they have constructed heading into the 2014-2015 season. Thanks to all of you guys that submitted your questions for this Q&A. Remember, they happen every Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday. If you want your sports questions answered, go to Twitter, tweet your questions to at PFSpot underscore Schlegel. I'll see you then.